The government of Brazil has decided to ban their citizens from accessing Twitter altogether after an ongoing dispute that they have been having with the company regarding political content on the platform. In Brazil, federal judges can order websites to remove content or at the very least block access to it in the country, and these orders also don't have to be published by the government for any of the people to see. So this federal judge, who looks like a Brazilian Lex Luthor, has decided to push the boundaries of this judicial power by first having Twitter accounts banned for expressing support towards the country's previous administration, or claiming that Brazil's elections were rigged, or criticizing him for having former President Bolsonaro investigated and his supporters arrested. Very similar to US politics, except with more green and yellow, because Brazil. Now, most social media companies will comply with tyrannical censorship laws in other countries as long as those countries are making them enough money. Even Twitter, under its current ownership, complies with censorship requests coming out of India and Turkey, and since Brazil is the largest market in South America, you would think that Twitter would play by the rules like Meta currently is across all of their platforms. But since Elon also probably noticed the parallels between US and Brazilian politics and constantly advertises Twitter as a free speech platform where you can express yourself for as little as $1 per year, the company decided to push back against Brazil's request for censorship this time. So Brazilian Lex Luthor decided to escalate the situation by threatening to arrest a legal representative of Twitter's that was working in Brazil. And this caused Twitter to close down all of their operations in the country, which basically means that they're closing down any offices that they might have had there, and they're removing the rest of the employees that they have in Brazil so that they don't end up becoming political prisoners. Brazil responded to this by telling Twitter that they need to appoint a new legal representative within 24 hours or they were going to get banned from the country because all foreign companies need to have one working in Brazil in order to operate legally. And Twitter, despite its harsh working conditions, didn't want to give up another one of their employees to potentially become a Brazilian political prisoner. And so last weekend, Twitter was officially banned in Brazil and telecommunications companies have started blocking people from accessing the website. But of course, everyone and their mother at this point knows that you can use a VPN to bypass restrictions like this. Elon even tweeted out the lowest resolution version of this meme I think I've ever seen about how much money VPN companies are going to make due to Brazilians using them to bypass the Twitter ban. But despite the lack of pixels in this meme, it has still been very accurate. Several VPN companies have gotten a spike in signups over the past few days, Proton VPN, for example, reported an 1800% increase in signups. And Brazil's government has responded to this by declaring that any Brazilian citizen caught using a VPN to access Twitter was going to be fined $8,900 per day, which is an insane fine anywhere, but especially in Brazil. Now, real quick, I want to remind anyone in Brazil or really anywhere that might be watching this that all VPN services are not created equally. Virtually all of them are going to claim that they don't log your traffic, but there's ultimately no way for you or I to verify this. Also, most VPN companies actually do end up complying with law enforcement requests for information, but instead of them handing over VPN logs that say your IP address connected to this VPN server, which then connected to Twitter, they'll hand over customer data that says this account connected to our app at this time and this person connected from this phone and this person paid with this credit card, etc. And this is all information that maybe directly can't be used to convict you of anything, but it definitely could be used as supporting evidence. So 
try to avoid services that require you to leave them with a whole lot of data, that require you to create accounts, pay with credit cards, and use personal information like your name, email, and phone number to set up the service. And of course, make sure you always check for DNS leaks with any VPN that you choose to use because if you have DNS leaks, the ISP can see what you're really connecting to even though you're using a VPN and they're gonna snitch to the government and then you'll be hit with a fine that's almost as high as the country's GDP per capita. But Elon is in a bit of a unique position here because not only does he own a social media company, he also owns Starlink, which is a satellite internet company. And lawyers from Starlink have already told the telecom regulators in Brazil that they would not be complying with the Twitter ban, which means people in Brazil who use Starlink can still connect to Twitter without even needing to use a VPN. Imagine being that one kid that used to get bullied for having the slower satellite internet instead of fiber or cable, but now you've got the cool internet because you can still use Twitter. So with Starlink, Elon Musk is literally able to go way over the head of the Brazilian government's attempts to ban him because Starlink has already been used successfully to provide communications and internet access in Ukraine and has become an integral part of their network infrastructure for both military and civilian use since the war started. There have been attempts by the Russians to disrupt Starlink in the area with varying success, but apparently Starlink satellites are a whole lot harder to jam than conventional ones like Viasat. So I really don't think that Brazil is gonna have much luck blocking Starlink or Twitter if they continue to provide access to them either. They might end up passing a law that just bans people from using Starlink, which would force Brazilian payment processors and other entities like PayPal and Google Pay to block payments from Brazilian customers to Starlink. But in a way, Brazil already jumped the gun on that because they already froze Starlink's bank accounts as a way to get back at Twitter for not paying fines. Starlink currently serves more than 250,000 people in Brazil, and as long as their accounts are frozen, they essentially aren't making any money with the service anyway. The legal disputes between Elon's companies and Brazil are ongoing, but the next move could very well be Elon just continuing to offer Starlink connections to Brazil for free and possibly even expanding their operations in the country. And now that I think about it, Starlink could still make money in Brazil if they just allow people to pay for the service in cryptocurrency. This is an excellent opportunity for Elon to start another Dogecoin rally like he did back in 2021. He could offer a 10% discount to Starlink users when they pay in Dogecoin, kind of like I do on my website base.win with Monero XMR. Such internet, much freedom. In the short term, I don't think there's any way for Brazil to force Elon's tech services out of the country, but what do you think will happen long term? Will the Brazilian government launch a campaign to build their own great firewall and jam connections to Starlink? Or will Elon beat the Brazilian government in this war of attrition to the point that Starlink becomes Brazil's primary ISP and Twitter becomes the most popular website? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below, like and share this video to hack the algorithm, and have a great rest of your day.